Hi everybody, I'm Matt Hill from Velo, and today we're going to talk about mastering the intervalometer, featuring Velo's Shutterboss intervalometers. Let's get right into it. Do you want to make images like this? This is Sedona, Arizona. Or how about this? A Natural Bridges National Monument. Or this. This is a Capitol Reef National Park. All of these images were made with an intervalometer. So you might ask, what does an intervalometer do? Well, first and foremost, a, an intervalometer provides you with some features that are not included with a camera. Extra programming options to control exposures that are longer than a fraction of a second. The second is, by not touching your camera during an exposure, you can avoid vibration, which allows for what we call critical sharpness. When you want to have the sharpest picture possible, you don't want to touch your camera during a long exposure. And the third is, sometimes you want to do sequences of images, and this requires some specialized hardware to do, to set that program to tell the camera what to do and how many times to do it. So what can you do with that? You can make time lapses, which is a sequence of images over time that's usually animated, uh, either video or animated GIF. You can do star stacks, which is a cumulative exposure of long exposures that connect star trails. Star trails is the shorter version of it, where you can take one long exposure. You can also make soft water during the daytime. You can take exposures of blooming flowers, sequences of that. You can make really tack sharp macro photography by not touching the camera. And you can get yourself in the photograph by making better group shots and creative self portraits. So how does an intervalometer work? I get asked this question a lot because I teach long exposure and night photography. The most common misconception about intervalometers is that each of these things along the top are separate. When in actuality, it happens as a sequence from left to right. And we're gonna go through all of these settings, but the most important thing that you should know going into this and going forward from here on is that each of these things happen in order from left to right. First, let's take a look at the Wired Shutterboss 2. It's extremely popular for a reason. Number one, it has all the features that you'd want. It comes for all the connections for the cameras that you want to use it with, and it's affordable. So let's start on the left. Top left, it says self. This is the self timer. What does it do? It says, how long do I wait until the shutter opens? Sounds self-explanatory, right? But it doesn't just have to be one second, two seconds, or ten seconds like you're normally on a camera. You can set anything from one second to 99 hours if you want. That's just a longer delay. You might know that something's happening in the future that you want to start now, but it's going to open later. It's really important also to let vibration die down when you start something. Let's say the longer the focal length, the more vibration is amplified when you're on a tripod. So by hitting the button, letting go of the intervalometer, and giving everything time to settle, you can achieve that critical sharpness. And also, this self-timer is great for getting yourself in the photograph when you want to be creative. Moving on, here's an example of a self-timer. In the top portion of the screen, you'll see that the tree, dead center up top, has some light on it. It didn't come that way. Everything else here was illuminated by moonlight. What I did with the self-timer here was I set a 30-second delay so I could scuttle up the trail and come around behind a tree to properly light paint this tree that's in the top of the frame when the shutter opened. And I could hear it because I was 10 or 20 feet away. I could hear it go click, but I knew that I had enough time to get up there safely to light it from the right position. This was shot for four minutes at f5.6 at my camera's best ISO, which is ISO 100, where the highest quality is. Moving on to the next section. This is the one where everybody really, you know, the rubber meets the road. This is how long will expo your exposure be. And you'll see the numerals there, first hours, then minutes, then seconds. So you would hit the set button and change these numerals until it's the the duration that you want. The previous exposure was four minutes, so I had 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0. So what can you do with this? You can say, all right, I want my exposure to be 
this long. It's pretty simple, right? But the thing that you might not know if you haven't done this before is you have to set your camera to the manual setting and then scroll your shutter speeds all the way down past the fractions into the seconds. And once you get past 30 seconds on nearly every camera, there's a setting called bulb. So you would set your camera to bulb and then you would set your intervalometer to the number of seconds that you require. Now, uh, I do a lot of night photography, but that doesn't mean that I don't also use daytime photography uh, for other artistic purposes. Uh, let's say you have a neutral density filter, like a six stop or a 10 stop or a 12 or a 15 stop, or you're stacking those neutral density filters. This is when you get into greater than fractions of a second during the daytime. And you would use an intervalometer like this to achieve those long exposures during the day. You can make people disappear in highly public places. You can make clouds get creamy and smooth during the day. Uh, anything where there's motion, you can show that motion with a long exposure, daytime or nighttime. Here's another example. Uh, this is from Capitol Reef National Park. On the left, we have a four minute long exposure at ISO 800 and F4. You can see that the clouds are covering the stars a little bit. It was a little bit of a cloudy night. Um, this is only moonlight and natural light uh, that's illuminating the rocks. And it's a very soft effect, like a soft box. There's not a lot of definition to the rocks, but you can still see their structure, right? And of course, the stars are in apparent motion. It's actually us that's in motion, not the stars. Uh, so the stars have this radial blur because we're not pointed right at the, the North Star. But the one on the right, where I have my friend Steve up front, uh, this is only 30 seconds long. And because I was using a 15 millimeter lens, the stars are points. Uh, if you want to learn more about when stars blur and when they don't, I suggest taking a workshop or checking out YouTube. There's lots of people out there that will teach you the 500 or the 600 rule. You can Google that. So this is only 30 seconds long. And because at 30 seconds, I didn't get enough illumination in the foreground, I did some light painting off to the right. So I combined the self timer with the 30 second exposure, which gave me enough time to swing around to the right and light paint those rocks from the right hand side, bringing out the detail by adding shadows. And then Steve stood down there with his flashlight steady and still for 30 seconds, giving this opportunity for you to understand the scale of these rocks, which is missing from the one on the left. So how do you choose how long an exposure should be? Practice, uh, pre-visualization, and knowing what you want to bring out of a scene. The photograph on the left is successful. It shows time passing, but a photograph on the right has more drama because of the human in it and the scale and the relationship to the environment. And that's one of the things that having an intervalometer does. Uh, it provides you with the opportunity to uh, explore these options with more uh, uh, you know, technique and deliberate action. The next thing over, the third one over from the left is interval. This is how long in between exposures. If you're taking more than one exposure, you need to set the duration between exposures. In night photography, we generally don't have this set at longer than one second because generally we're doing star stacks. During the daytime, however, if you're doing a time lapse, you may want to set this to two seconds or five seconds or 10 seconds or 30 seconds or five minutes and take a picture, however long it may be, and then wait five minutes and then take another picture with the intent to put these into a sequence to show the passage of time. So you would, if a video runs at 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second, you got to keep in mind while you're calculating this, how many frames do I need to achieve a specific clip length to show the amount of time and how frenetic is that energy and I'll show you some more at the end uh, some examples of those but you can also document sequential events like if a building is being constructed or destructed or if you want to capture wildlife migrating or coming to a water hole or a storm rolling in you can create sequences by setting the appropriate amount of time in between the frames so that when you animate it it, it looks a lot better because there's still frames properly exposed and that's different than video, which this will always be superior uh, using a photograph like this. Moving along, we have what this says NO, which is an abbreviation of number. 
I say quantity. How many exposures do you want to take? I often use one unless I'm doing, uh, I'm shooting with the intent to make a, a star stack. Uh, a star trail is one long exposure where everything's cumulative, right? A star stack is when you reach a maximum exposure and you need to repeat that a multiple number of times and when you want to bring it into Photoshop, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, and combine them together to create extra long star trails. So if you don't know how many shots you're going to do, but you know you want to keep shooting until either A, you're satisfied, B, the thing that's happening in front of you stops happening, uh, or C, your battery runs out, then you can set that number to the two horizontal dashes, which is infinity. And it'll just keep shooting until you tell it to stop shooting or batteries run out or your card is full. Here is a shot, uh, another shot from Capitol Reef. This is, uh, this is a stack. And this was 10 exposures at 60 seconds and ISO 400. What I did here was because we were in the grotto and it's near a campground on the right and a campground on the left, sometimes there was an occasional car passing through. The car was lucky because in one of the frames, that light that you see grazing through the trees there came from headlights. I could have done that with a flashlight, but a car did it for me. But it only happened in one of the frames. In another frame, I got way too much light, and I ended up having to mask that out when I made the star stack. Uh, but I got these 10 exposures at 60 seconds, which equals a 10-minute total exposure when combined in Photoshop. And the last thing along the top in that sequence as we go across is beep. It basically says, do you want to hear a beep every time something happens, which is every time there's an exposure. Um, I usually set this to off because I, I, I'm setting things ahead of time and I know what they are and I just know when to come back. If you like to hear when things are happening, you can turn it on. Uh, yeah, and when you use the bulb slider on the intervalometer, which I'll show you in a couple of slides, it can beep every second. So if you want an audible to hear it go beep, 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 every, while you're, you have the shutter open manually, you can use that so you don't have to set a separate timer. Now, the Wireless Shutter Boss 2 is the upgrade to the Wired Shutter Boss, and it has some other features which it brings to the table that will be great for some photographers. Number one, the obvious, it's wireless. It's not connected to the camera. So you have no vibration whatsoever. Or you don't have to wait for it to stop swinging for the shutter to open to get maximum or critical sharpness. But number two, along the bottom, it has another sequence of opportunities for you to control your camera wirelessly. So let's start on the bottom left. The first thing you have is single shot. Most people are going to use this during the daytime. So you can operate this up to 250 feet away. Uh, and if you want to hide, you know, if you're taking pictures of wildlife or put yourself in the photograph, you can set your camera to single shot and set this to single shot. And every time you press the button, it'll take a picture. Pretty simple, right? Uh, you can also half press on the bulb uh, button on the intervalometer and it will focus your camera if it's an autofocus, which is cool. And you have a visual on the intervalometer in your hand. When it turns green, your camera's in focus and then you can press it the rest of the way and you'll make an exposure. The next one over to the right is continuous shooting. You would have to set your camera to continuous shooting. And this just allows you to do the same things you did before, which is a half press as it achieves focus wirelessly. And if you press and hold the large bulb button on the intervalometer, it will continue to take photographs until you release the button, battery runs out, or your camera card fills up. Uh, so why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you want to wait to see something happen in front of you, or something's happening so quickly you have to grab as many frames as you can to make sure you got the right frame. That might be sports. Uh, it might be some action that's happening in front of you or just a street scene where you want to be as inconspicuous as possible. The next one over is bulb. Uh, if you want to do wireless bulb of uh, anything, you can set your camera to bulb and set this to bulb and then do the same thing that we talked about before. So 
Uh, yeah, lightning is another great example of using this. Lightning is so hard to predict that sometimes you just want to hold it open, wait for that flash, and then let it go so you don't get too many lightning strikes instead of programming it. And then delay. Same thing we talked about before. If you want to set the delay before the shutter opens, you can do that also. Great for group shots and stuff like that. Uh, we, when we go to national parks, <coughs> we always have a, a shot where everybody goes and stands near the sign outside. Uh, and we use this feature to do that. Uh, here's some other cool features. I talked to you about the bulb slider. You see the, the orange circle uh, on the bottom right? That is the manual bulb slider. You can use this to create an exposure anytime. You press the button, it takes a picture, it activates, right? It's the same on both the intervalometers. So you press and slide upwards, it will, sh it will lock on. It'll count upwards also at the same time and let you know how long you're, you're holding the shutter open. One other great thing is if the battery should die in your intervalometer and you're connected with the wired method, both of them can be connected directly, this will work without batteries. So in a pinch, your intervalometer still works as a, an external bulb controller. On the upper left hand side, there is the light bulb slash lock button. When you tap this, it will backlight the display, which is great when you're in the dark, and hold that uh, brightness for 10 seconds, and then turn off. You just tap it again uh, to bring the brightness on. Or if you press and hold it, it will lock the intervalometer so that you can't change the settings. That doesn't mean you cannot use the start stop button over on the right hand side. That's the button that you use to activate any sequence that you've created that we went over in the beginning. So after you set everything along the top, self, long, interval, number, that start timer start stop button is what you press to start the sequence and to stop it should you want to start stop it before the sequence is over. What can you do with that? Well, this scene in Sleepy Hollow Cemetery uh, in upstate New York, up in Westchester, uh, I was photographing uh, one of the lantern tours that happened during Halloween, and I wanted to get the moon in there, and I wanted to get people in there so that it, we could show the warm glow of the kerosene lanterns that they, that they carry around. And there's no way to, to program it for this to happen, so I just used the manual bulb slider to take this picture this is one of 20 and this was the most successful. Uh, this was 30 seconds at 5.6 at ISO 200. Uh, I also had, incidentally, I had a flash on a radio trigger on the back side. You see the blue in the door there? I remotely triggered that with the camera through wireless synchronization uh, so that it would make the doors pop a little bit more too. I just want to stress this. I've had a lot of people come up to me over the years and say, how does this intervalometer thing work? Just keep in mind it works from left to right. If you're lost, go through each of these settings and make sure that you haven't set something that doesn't make sense, like 59 hours, <laughs> 59 days, 59 hours, 59 seconds. That might You might be waiting a long time for your shutter to open if it looks like this. So uh, I hope that these help you create awesome long exposure photography, but we haven't touched on uh, one more product and also how to make uh, time-lapse photography. So let's look at our newest Velo Shutter Boss. The Bluetooth Shutter Boss is fantastic. It's very compact. It is, uh, you could say wireless uh, because you put this on your camera. It's not through the hot shoe. You can put it, it's a cold mount. You put it on top of your camera or mount it next to your camera and you plug it in with the proper camera connection cable and you download the free app from Velo and you can use it with any iOS device uh, six and above. Uh, the button, there's two buttons on it. One turns the power on, and the, the forward one is just like the manual bulb release on any other Velo intervalometer. You press that, it takes a picture. You press and hold it, it holds the shutter open if you're in bulb mode. But more excitingly, let's look at the software. <clears throat> the first scene that you see when you open up the app is this. These yellow uh, these yellow buttons, all you do is touch them and slide them to the right. Uh, much like before, single, if you slide it to the right, it takes a single picture. Continuous, you press and slide to the right, it'll take pictures continuously while you hold it. When you release, it'll stop taking continuous pictures. That, of course, requires your camera to be in continuous drive mode. 
bulb mode just like all the other ones if you set your camera to manual shutter speed and set it down to bulb you press and hold that over to the right and release it'll hold the shutter open until you tap it again and then it'll close the shutter for you and then self timer mode you can tap the five seconds to change it to anywhere from one to 30 seconds and then you can set a countdown then you tap the self timer go do what you want to do it'll open the shutter after the number of seconds that you set outside of these simple controls if you tap the large orange set intervalometer then you're going to see this you have the ability to set 10 separate schedules which is fantastic why would you want to do that well let's take a look at what a schedule is a schedule is basically one sequence like we were talking about with the shutter boss 2 the wired one or the wireless shutter boss 2 it's that left to right action where you're going to say when does it start starting at the top you set the date to hopefully today's date or maybe a date in the future you can't shoot in the past you set the exact time that you want and this is based off the time on your phone so it's totally synchronized and then below that you say how long do i want the shutter to stay open this is a pretty long exposure it's 12 hours right <laughs> that's a good exposure in, in my heart I, I love long exposures and then how many shots do you want to take at that duration that'd be 30 and how long in between so this one would be a 12 and a half hour exposure 30 times with one hour five minutes and 10 seconds in between it's sort of an unrealistic setting however i just wanted to show you the power of what we can do here and then when you're done with that you click activate and it sends that program over to the bluetooth shutter boss via bluetooth and then that shutter boss will wait until that very moment and start executing this schedule or this program for you and then you can go move on to schedule two which will automatically set the date and time to the next possible exposure for you and schedule up to nine more of them if you want to cancel at any time you can do two things one you can click cancel all on the app that you have or you can just turn the power off on the shutter boss uh, either of those work uh, so here is a time lapse that my colleague Sean Collins made. And Sean made this using a Panasonic GH4 and he shot it on JPEG. And we set all of the exposure controls to manual. And during the edit in Premiere, uh, Adobe Premiere Creative Cloud, he set uh, these to different frame rates to make sure that you could see the, the motion that's going on. So it's not too frenetic, not too fast, or not sluggish, not too slow. Uh, some of these were one second in between. Some of these were two seconds or five seconds in between. Uh, and then he, was, he had his set 24 frames per second. So that's the end of our presentation if you have any questions at all uh, find us on the interwebs respond to us here on the YouTube channel we'd be happy to chat with you and if you have any other questions about using the intervalometer please post them here uh, we'd love to talk with you and if uh, you know we'll work through it with you otherwise thank you so much have a wonderful day and uh, happy shooting